you know the drill. You buy the ticket, you take the ride. Welcome back to the heat wave edition of the Morning Buzz with Jimmy. I'm Jimmy. I'm hotter than hell. It's like so hot you can't even breathe outside. Um, and even hotter, it's even hotter in Canada. And we're going to find out today as I bring in my friend Tyler from the band Let's Go. Nick, bring him in. Tyler, what's up? Hey, Jimmy. Not too much. Uh, just trying to get near Kamloops, British Columbia. Thanks for having me on the show, man. No, dude. Thanks for you know, thanks for coming on, and thanks. Like I said, <laughs> we had a little bit of mishaps due to the heat and uh, everything today. Uh, my studio is just oh, ex exhaustingly hot, and I feel bad for Nick because he's working in here in it like uh, for hours. Yeah, well, he's uh, he's down for the cause for sure, man. I don't know. I was I was getting pretty squirrely. I almost didn't make it. It's like 120 degrees here in Kamloops, BC. So. Uh, yeah, just trying uh, not to move at all, acting like a lizard, you know? <laughs> Same, so. Yeah, man, with like, you gotta have like six ACs running just to combat it. <laughs> no kidding. So, tell me about the band, man. Like, I just saw you guys release a new single. Yeah, uh, we're called Let's Go. We're from Family D.C. We play punk rock music, and we started in 2018. Uh, and at that time... It was just me and my friend Dusty, the drummer, because uh, we were playing in a cover band together. I had been on like a 10 year hiatus from having my own punk rock band where I wrote songs and, uh, and everything like that. So we had been playing in cover bands the summer in uh, the cover band we were in. And we had some degree of success. We played some local clubs and got some people dancing and stuff like that. But the cover band fell apart. And everybody else kind of just fucked off, turned to Dusty and said, uh, you want to keep going and start a band? And he says, I've been writing songs for the last 10 years. And I've got a little bit of material. So we started the band in 2018. And at that point, we were two piece because uh, just like the title of that SNFU record, nobody else wanted to play with us. So we did just the two-piece thing, and we played our first few shows with backing tracks, which is not ideal, um, just having drums and guitar and singing live, but we're, I was so excited that we just wanted to keep going and not give up just because we couldn't find a bassist or another guitarist. So that was the beginning of the band. And uh, after that, we played a few shows, and my longtime friend Scotty Bass, the bass player in the band, he had been coming to our shows, and I kept saying, Scotty, come on, you got to saddle up the bass, man. you got to join the band. And I kept poking and prodding, and eventually he said, okay, sure, I'll join the band. And that's when we really got going and recorded our first music together. Uh, so about 2019, we kind of, that might have been, 2019 was when Scotty joined, and we've been kind of in overdrive since then, and been releasing a song every month this year in 2012 or 2021 i do that i do that shit all the time dude no worries but one song a month that's great that's great but if you said you've been writing for 10 years i guess you probably have a little bit of a back catalog to go to huh there is a bit of a back catalog sometimes i, I skim through there and it's hard because uh we like i said we've been doing one every month so we've got to kind of stay one month ahead of the curve so I mean, we're trying to find a balance between hitting up all those songs that we think are worth, worth recording that have already been written, but now we're getting kind of itchy just to like write some brand new material. Uh, we have a new drummer now. His name is Will, and he's joined the band. So as we start jamming together, you know, I'd like to... It's time for some fresh, fresh stuff, but it's all fresh to you guys, so don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's a, 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 Nick and I were listening to it, actually, when we were setting up and everything in here, man. It's like, I, And I listened to it after I talked to you, what, on Sunday there, and, like, it's got something good going on for sure, man. Like, I, I dig it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, one of being in a punk rock band for me, um, 
it is meeting people like you that I wouldn't get to meet because, you know, in my town, it's, it's pretty limited. You know, we're kind of close to Vancouver. We're a five-hour drive. But like I said, we can't, we couldn't find a burn family. We, we can't find, a, been having issues finding a second guitarist in family that wants to play our style of music. So when I meet people that are kind of into the same thing, you know, fast and punk rock and everything like that, it's always great just to meet somebody and talk about the music with them and stuff like that. So makes it worth it thanks for listening man yeah no and thank you like too because like i'm in the same boat like here because like you know it's there's just nobody around like i told you before about joining that country band and stuff like i just wanted to play so bad but like i don't know when your heart and soul is into something like punk rock or something like you can only you know fake it for a little bit like until <laughs> it just it, there's no more yeah yeah because at first i find this fun because there's people on the dance floor dancing and it's like okay well if I was here playing my punk music, there'd be probably just people standing on the sides. And, you know, like we played some weird shows for our first gigs. We did like some political rallies for local political candidates. We did like uh, antique car shows, all in the small town of Barrier, BC, which is like a town of 2,000 people. But it was crazy because everybody in the community was super supportive, even though it was so small. We'd have like all these people from this country kind of town coming out and supporting us at our punk rock shows so that was pretty cool but yeah even even though people get dancing with the cover bands and stuff it just becomes kind of like a job after a while and you're playing other people's music and if you've got that fire in your heart that you want to make the music yourself it's, it's never going to cut it that's exactly it too man like you, you couldn't have said it any better and like speaking of punk rock like you happen to be you told me you had a story anyway that you actually got to play on a warp tour once yeah, I, I joined a, a band called Avarice in 2009, so I'll just go hello and say hello to Duca, if you get to see this somehow. Uh, so I joined this Australian band, and we played Vans Warped Tour 2009, and that was pretty cool because the headliners were like No Effects and Less Than Jake and Bad Religion, so it was pretty cool to be able to like watch them from the side of the stage and, you know... We did about nine shows with them. And I got a, got to meet a lot of the people in the band that I grew up listening to. And uh, I've actually got a story about partying with Fat Mike. I got to meet No Effect. Al Jefe was so cool. Like He didn't even know us, but he saw us like struggling to set up on our stage. It was like a semi-truck stage for Ernie Ball. And Jefe walked by and just decided to help us with our setup. And he like squeaked in my ass and he was like, hitting the drum for sound check, just like being a champ, man. That's so but, cool, dude. Uh, yeah, these are really cool guys. They were all really cool guys, and I think that's mostly the story you'll hear from everybody that meets them. Uh, I saw Fat Mike walking around. Well, no, he was riding around on a, like, a bicycle, like with the tassels hanging off the <laughs> handlebars, like a girl, little girl's bike. <laughs> and it had a basket in the front, and he's cruising around, and I had a joint on me, and I, I threw a joint in his basket, and I said, hey, Mike, uh, here's a joint, and I'll see you later, and he rode away, so later that day or that evening, I saw him, and I said, Mike, you still have that joint, let's go smoke it together, right? I was like, this is my chance, I get to smoke weed with Mike, and he said, no, I don't have any weed, but I got seven grams of <laughs> on the back, so I was like, okay. I'll go on the bus for some. <laughs> and uh, yeah, everybody else from my band was there hanging out. You know, like the drummer was talking to Melvin outside, and I was on the bus with Mike and some of his friends. And you know, we were partying it up. And I may have, I may have had a little bit too much that night because I kind of got into the deep and meaningful. You know how that can happen easily. Uh, when you've maybe had a little bit too much and, and you you start getting into those deep and meaningful conversations that maybe aren't so deep and meaningful. And I've been listening to Coaster. It was the No Effects album that was out that year in 2009. And that was the album. It had a few really sad songs on it, like uh, My Orphan Year. It was the song, I guess, about, I believe it was about Fat Mike's mom passing away when she had cancer. And his dad died the same year. And in my fucking drug addled brain, yeah, in my drug addled brain, I thought to myself, well, my mom had cancer too. That's, why don't I bring that up? 
And I said, hey, Mike, you know, uh, my mom had cancer too, bro. And he was just kind of like, okay. And like super bummed out. And uh, the, the thing about it is, though, my mom had thyroid cancer and she had her thyroid and was like, she's fine. Oh, so, well, that's, that's good I news. I didn't tell him that part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, uh, you know, I feel like a total dirtbag. And things happen, man. Like, uh, <laughs> I have a small story. We were at Camp Anarchy, and the friend I was with, there was some neighbors that had a bunch of, you know what I mean, like a bunch. Well, we all, like, I mean, we had been up for pretty much two days just from traveling and everything else. We watched the first day of the show. Me and my buddy pass out. I wake up, and he's standing outside, and it's just like, you know, five in the morning, and I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? Like, why are you up? And he's like, oh, he's like, those idiots. He's like, they gave me their stuff. They were so whacked, and he's like, they... <laughs> They they said to just bust them out some. He's like, so I just dumped it all on the table and cut it to three. <laughs> and I was like, but like, yeah, he uh, he didn't make it to Sunday. He slept through like the entire like Sunday. Yeah, we didn't see him at all. So he was just he was just like off outside with the thousand yard stare. You, like, you, dude, you the thousand yard stare stare. You nailed it because that's exactly what we call it too. <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, some people have certain party skills. Some people are more geared toward longevity and some people kind of just do that. You know? Yeah, and I, I think he was geared toward longevity but wasn't thinking for like the long longevity of it, you know what I mean? He was thinking like, oh, I'll get into the next day but he didn't realize like there was still two more days to go, you know? Which on his part like was yeah. shitty because like no effects, bad religion, less than Jake were all on the last day too. Oh, no. Yeah, I just, I was like, man, I can't imagine paying for this festival and missing this right now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Ooh, that one hurt. Which festival was it that? It was uh, Camp Anarchy. It was 2019. But it was when uh, No Effects was allowed to play their first show back in the United States. After their little mishap at Punk Rock Bowling the year before. I remember that. I remember when that happened. I kind of got the feel like, feeling like, who banned, banned themselves from their own festival because they didn't feel like playing, but I guess there were sponsors and stuff that probably oh. dropped them out. I was at the festival, man, afterwards, the uh, Camp Punk and Drublick, because it was, like literally was the week after, and it, like they switched the Descendants the day before, but like, dude, it was like, it was like some of the weirdest vibes ever, but they're like shoving that no effects beer down everybody's throat. Like, was it to drink it all, or was it to promote it? Like, but they never made it again, so I think it was to get rid of it, but like, it was... I don't know. It was like concentration camp style, like stuff too. Like not that bad, I guess, but like you had to walk miles for the bathrooms. You had to walk miles for everything. And like the next year, like I didn't, I don't even think I showed my ticket to anybody. Like, and I literally could walk back and forth like easily. Like everything was so much, so much nicer. And like, I don't know. I just think like all that madness and like with everything with no effects and stuff, I just think like the whole festival just blew apart. And the bands were still good, but, like, just the setup, like, everything just was just, oh, it was bad. Yeah, I hear you. Um, yeah, I mean, music festivals are like that at the best of times, I guess. I, I really haven't been to a lot of big festivals other than Worker, but I could only imagine how nasty, like, one of those huge ones would be, like, Coachella or whatever. Whatever the other ones are, they must be, like, just so grimy with so many people there. And, like, I just... I just imagine the porta potty. Well, that's what I was just, like today. That's what I was gonna tell you, dude. Like that Saturday of it or whatever. They're like they're literally coming there to clean them out like three times in the morning because there's so many people waiting because they had so many people just to one or two porta potty. And it was just it, uh, ew, ew. Like I don't know. I like I know I it's never good when you, when you have to. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jimmy. Oh, no, no, go ahead. I was done. Go ahead. What are you saying? I was just going to say, it's never good if you have to cross something called Kit Lake to get to the bathroom, right? Yeah, and, and dude, like, literally, like, you were walking, like, I, like I said, almost three-quarter of a mile to a mile to get to this freaking, to a bathroom, you know what I mean? No matter where you were at, it was it was awful. I mean, like I said, the shows were great, but it was literally, like, you might as well just, like, parked your car and just slept in the mud for three days. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, hopefully it's made up for it at least, uh, you know. Hopefully that outweighed it, but yeah, I'd like to check out punk rock bowling sometime. But, oh. And there's a lot of good festivals in Europe that I see popping up, like Brass Rock is a punk rock festival, and they're booking a lot of like 90s skate punk 
style band. They've always had the. I, I feel like they've always had the better ones, man. Yeah, I'm starting to agree with you. Yeah, it's it's almost a different taste musically, but uh, yeah. Um, I actually, since I'm telling horror stories, I have one back from the cover band days as well. Um, so we played this. Uh, we played like a biker funeral party uh, out in the rural part of BC. And, you know, you end up playing a lot of those kind of things in cover bands, all the biker parties. And, of course, they want to hear, like, ZZ Top and Winter Skinner and ACDC and everything like that. I'm I'm not a huge Skinner fan, but they've got some great songs. But not Simple Man or Freebird. I just, I can't get over those punk men. And Simple Man, it just seems to drag on forever. So, like, at the best of times, that could be hard for me. Me, but the band I was playing with was just full of dickheads, man, and they couldn't play either. And uh, I don't say that lightly. I don't talk about it except for this one band had a real dickhead. And he wanted a, it was a biker funeral, and the man's son that had passed away, the son came up to us and said, okay, I want you to play Simple Man on stage, uh, Simple Man on the stage, and I'm going to come up with my motorbike and do a big burnout, and we're going to Shoot off fireworks at the same time. It's going to be like a nice tribute to his dad, right? Because it was one of his dad's favorite songs. So we get out to play Simple Man. And, you know, of course, this guy, the singer and guitar player, had not practiced or he just wasn't capable or whatever. And he played it so badly that as soon as we finished playing, the fucking guy ran up to the stage and he was like, What the fuck? You ruined my dad's song. You fucking ruined his funeral. And he was like yelling and getting really mad at him, like a biker party. So, yeah, that's the joys of playing in cover bands, right? Yeah, I, I have a similar story. Uh, not a funeral, it was a wedding. Um, I played in this metal band, and the drummer, his sister, who <laughs> apparently, the I, don't, I guess she got around, um, was getting married. And, um, well... Neither, so for some reason, they wanted us to play after the DJ was done in this hotel room, okay? And we're, we're in a metal band. I'm like 17, 18 years old. So, we're, okay, you know, we'll, we'll play. So we go in there, but he, like, wanted us to, like, cover a couple, like, ACDC songs and a couple Leonard Skinner songs. So, go figure. So we're like, okay, whatever. Dude, we don't get, like, two songs in. They're shutting us down. The bride's making out with some dude in the back. Like, it's complete, absolute chaos, man. And I just, like, unplugged my shit and, like, quietly walked out, loaded up my car, and drove myself away. Like, I was like, I'm done with this. But, yeah, same. Just no. That's, that's awesome. Just give them the Irish goodbye. Like, you know what? They'll be okay. I am out of here. Yeah, like, they don't even need me tonight. Like, it's too loud already. Like, they don't need the bass. <laughs> That's great, man. Oh, dude, I'm telling you. That's just, just like, I don't know. I feel like our town's, like you said, your town was about 2,000 people. That's what we would got about here. So it's probably about the same thing. Nice. And what what town exactly is that? I, you told me you're I'm in central in, Pennsylvania. Yeah, Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania. It's like 20. Nice. One of the burgs. Yeah, it's like 20 miles outside of State College. But it's not a burg that ends with an H like the real ones. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're just gotcha. we're just little time here. And and so it's a small town. And when you when you go to shows, where where do you go to? Um, like, what's the closest town where they have Pittsburgh? Probably. Well, oh, we have one. We do. We're lucky enough. We have a club called McGarvey's over in Altoona, which is probably like a half hour, forty five minutes from here. And they get some great bands all the time. And luckily, we have that. But otherwise, we're traveling to Pittsburgh. You are really lucky to have that, man. A town of 2,000 people. Like, I don't know what the vibe is like, but... It's a sunny know, sunny place with shady people, man. Usually more rural. <laughs> sunny place with shady people, so it's not a big country town or anything. They like to rock and roll, and you're able to sneak some punk rock in there. No, they are a big country town. They, it's the weirdest thing. They're either country or they like rap, but, like, there's not a rapper within... <laughs> 10 million miles of here, man. <laughs> it's the strangest thing. Dude, have you heard this? Have you heard all this new bullshit stadium country? They've been trying to rap in country for like the last 10 years, and it's the cringiest thing I've ever heard. Man. It's so bad. It, it's, I don't know, in my opinion, it's all bad, but 
it's just it's it's hard like i i like rap music but like i like like nwa rap music and like stuff that i grew up with yeah. but like today i just feel like every rapper is a youtube I artist love rap. i just want somebody to do it i'd like to hear somebody that can actually rap do it you know like it's, not a fucking lady on country singer man it just disgusts me it's like you know their fans are so racist too like not all of them but a good chunk of them and they want to start rapping in their like country music it's like, come on, man, you pick one or the other. You don't get to be, like, corny, white, racist, and also try and rap in your song. Thank you. Bullshit. Thank you. I could have, like, dude, I have all the time saying the same thing. I'm like, I don't know how these kids are, like, like, because they are. There's, you know, there's a lot of racists around here, and they're, like, doing the same thing. But, you know, they're racist, but they're listening to, you know, gangster rap, like, but today's. And it's like, well, what, like, pick pick a side here, man. Like, you you know, you can't, you can't blend it. Like, I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah, yeah, I don't get it either, man. It's, eh, well, you know what? It's, there's, I like to believe there's more good people that aren't like that. Sometimes it's hard for me to believe that that's the truth, but I like to believe that there are. Dude, and I, I couldn't agree more with that either. Like, yeah, it's it's hard sometimes, but like some of those festivals, they, they bring me hope. Again, once you get around to get a bunch of like-minded, you know, punk rockers usually, it's like, you know, it's okay. Things will be all right. You know, we're just spread out throughout areas, I think, to keep everything calm. <laughs> Exactly, and you know, USA got a bad rep the last couple of years, um, and you know, we love to slam on you guys over here, just like I'm sure we get a lot of it back coming the other way, but the fact of the matter is, just because we're a few more parallel, you know, up doesn't mean that we're any better, like a lot of bad things have been happening here, a lot of discoveries, um, confirmation of uh, you know, indigenous children that were taken from their families and uh, deprogrammed and many horribly and killed in the residential school system that that uh, was implemented over here for the last, you know, hundred years or however long it's been. Uh, we've we've got our own skeletons in the closet too, but. Eh. You know, yeah. and, and what are you gonna do? You try to be a good person, right? Right. And as far as that goes, man, as far as I see it, that line somebody somebody just drew that line many years ago, and somebody believed in that line, and then some other people believed in that line. Like all that was was some asshole drawing a line. Like you know what I mean? You're no different than me. I'm no different than you. Like it's just imaginary lines. It's bullshit. Yeah, and that's what that's what gets me about like people's patriotism and stuff it's like what are you proud of man like we're all somewhere yeah like we're all these people we're all standing somewhere yeah you don't gotta don't gotta get all all uppity about it no from one place. and we're all literally on like the same big continent so like all you are like you're just we're on the same piece of land you're just up north further than me like it's this you know totally. like it just i don't know it makes no yeah. sense to me but whatever we'll, yeah. we'll just stick to our own it seems like it works the best right be good people yeah. So where can we find uh Yeah, where can we find uh let's go on the Facebook and all that stuff? Uh you can find Let's Go on Facebook at Facebook.com slash let's go C A and we're on Instagram at let's go underscore B C. Uh we're on Spotify as Let's Go with an exclamation point. Okay, it's not consistent anywhere. I'm kind of a mess. I can't remember if I ever bring in the exclamation marks or leave it out. But you can find us there. And you can find our basic Scotty at uh, secondhand stores looking for high beanie baby. But I don't want anybody to bring it up to him. And don't bring up his high beanie baby question. Because back in like the 2000s, during the beanie baby boom, like... He had come in money and he thought that like this was going to be his retirement plan, right? So he bought up all the Beanie Babies. He would go on road trips to other towns, buy all these Beanie Babies up, right? And the kids would see him come and they just, they hated him because nobody else could get any Beanie Babies because Scotty bought all the Beanie Babies. And uh, he held on to them for so long, man. He kept holding and holding because he just, just wanted that Beanie Baby money, man. But, you know, as everybody knows, the Beanie Baby bubble popped. And now they're worth nothing. So if you see Scotty Bay, do not bring up his Beanie Baby collection because he's kind of sore about that. I can see why, man. I can totally see why. 
like I don't know like that uh, <laughs> I know I have another friend that did the same thing probably not to that extent but like he definitely you know had a bunch that he's like oh I'm holding on to these and yeah that paid off well <laughs> well hey man I want yeah I want to thank you for coming on was there anything else you wanted to get out there for we cut it off here I'm dying in here <laughs> Okay, I, I got more things I want to talk to you about, man. I have some questions for you, but let's save it for another day. Well, no, shoot, man. What the hell? Go ball. ahead, shoot. Shoot, we got time. So, shoot. Um, I seen you got a new screen printing set up, and you're, you got the, you're doing photo emulsion method, and you got that little, like, light bed for it? Yeah. You get did, you made your first uh you made your first screen or did you do the print yet? No, I made my first uh film is what I made. Like, the film the, where, where I'll burn the image to the screen. Like I had to print it out and I was getting like, I was getting these horrible streaks for hours in this, uh, in this, like, cause it prints out basically, you know what I mean? Like on the uh, clear film and it'll print the black image, yeah. whatever. And yep. So I was getting that, but I was getting these streaks in it and the ink was running all over and I'm like, Oh my God. So I finally messed and tweaked cause I don't know anything about computers either. So, you know, that helps my cause. And finally, um, I tweaked it and turned the image. And I actually, when I spun the image, I don't know if it made the printer. And then we cleaned it out too, so that might have been something. But I spun it and like it just like made it seem like the printer was working way less hard, and it came out perfect. I let it dry. I checked it today, and all is good. I'm ready. I gotta like measure these spaces in the exposure unit where the lights are, just so it burns in the screen like dead center, so it lines up on the shirt. But like once I get these measurements, I can do that and go away. So. It's, it's a process, but I, it was really neat learning something myself. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, I, I want to congratulate you on picking a heat transfer method to start screen printing during a heat wave. I think that was like a really punk rock thing of you to do, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I, dude, I, the pen... Uh, all that equipment can be salty, but once you get it dialed in, you'll be good. Just yeah. Get dialed in, right? Yeah, I was, and that's what that's what I'm trying to do. And luckily, like I had, my, you know, my buddies from Filthy Low down there. You know, they gave me their image to use for their new shirts, and they're like, "We'll be your guinea pig." So, like, they were very cool about that. So, which was nice. Nice. Well, I'd love to be a customer one day once you're up and running. I'd love to be one of your first customers, man. We can make some shit. Well, yeah, man. And I just, I, I like to, I'd like to do it just to like do it because like I'm, I, like I've, I've cooked for 18 years and like I just, I cannot, I literally cannot stand being in the kitchen anymore. I like, I won't even cook at home. Like literally, the like, furthest place I go is making a pizza in the oven. And like I just, I can't. I, I hear that. Yeah, I just can't do it anymore. And like the screen printing thing, I don't know, like through the whole pandemic and stuff, art just started, started catching my eye more, I guess. And I started playing again and I don't know. And I was watching Simeon Meyer from Stupid Rad do all this stuff all the time. And I'm like, man, he looks like he's having a good time doing that. And I'm like, the more I watched, I'm like, that's what I want to do. That's sweet, man. It's, it's definitely an art form. And once you're good at it, you know, your skills will be in high demand because people like that hand done screen printing with the quality that it can provide, you know, it's, it's different than all the other new, easier, maybe less expensive or more idiot proof methods. Like with screen printing, it's a friggin' art, man. I, I've, I've tried to do it before and I could get nowhere near to a, to a final product, right? Like after, even after my second attempt. Uh, so props to you for, for working it out. I can't wait to see some of the stuff that you make. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see it too. <laughs> but we'll get by. Like I said. All right, man. Well, I guess we'll let. Okay, man. And then I uh, like to come back on sometime or keep in touch for sure, dude. I just I enjoy talking to you. I like you. you know, I think we have, have a lot of similarities in our lives. <laughs> yeah, I think we got a lot of common, man. This is a good intro. So let's let's chat more. Like I said, I like I like making new punk friends, man, and guys that like this music and have a passion for it too right like look at you you're sitting you're sitting in a freaking studio that's way too hot having a conversation with me like who nobody cares about just because we're both sitting here and we're passionate and that's great man so i appreciate it yeah well i, I do too man like i said it's always a blast talking meeting like I, I feel the same way i just it's really cool meeting and talking to somebody you know like-minded and you know it's about it has the passion about the same things you know but we will keep in touch for sure okay Okay, sounds good. I'll hold you to it, man. All right, for sure, man. Hey, you take care of yourself. Take care. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you, man. Take care.
And that was Tyler from Let's Go. Um, he plays guitar and he is the vocalist, as you heard. Um, got some cool things, had some cool stories. Um, it's hotter than hell. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, you know the drill. Buy the ticket, take the ride, get in the car. It's hot. Nick, let's go.